Hello friends! I'm sorry it's so dark. So uh, last week and this week we've just been crazy busy filling Black Friday orders. We're still getting caught up with Black Friday orders so um, I'm finally getting to sit down and do this budget check-in and it's late at night. <laughs> so I'm like you know what I can't wait for the sunshine. I want to film this video. Okay so in today's video we're going to check in for that first week of December. We're going to go over where I spent all my money, see if I'm staying on track in my variable categories, update um, my savings, my sinking funds, my we're going to do a savings challenge, and then we're going to do a QA and a at the end of the video. So we have a lot packed into this video. I hope you enjoy it, and let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so let's start with the monthly spread. So the way I like to use this page is I like to use this as a way to track all of my expenses each week. So we do when we do the weekly check-in. So starting with bills, I actually only had one bill come out this week and that was for our car insurance and that was $130. We're also going to be using this information to update the budget spreadsheet in just a minute here, but let's do all of this first. So next is debt, and I didn't have any debt payments come out this, this week. Next is food. So I ended up spending quite a bit on food this week. We spent $300 on food. So we'll see how that's going to affect our budget for the rest of the month for food in just a moment here. Then we have gas for the car. And I did need to get gas this week, and I ended up spending $29 on that. Next is household expenses. We did have some household expenses and altogether it came to $52. Household expenses are things like um, health and beauty products, like deodorant, shampoo, things like that. Also cleaning products like um, Windex, <laughs> like that kind of thing, uh, uh, soap for to wash dishes. Um, and then it also includes paper goods like paper towels, toilet paper, things like that, tissues. Okay, next is spending money. So there was a total of $51 that went to spending money this week. Okay, next is savings. So you and I are actually going to do that together in just a moment here, but we're going to, we're going to play some savings challenge games and we're going to have $60 to work with there. Okay, and then finally we have sinking funds. So I used to do sinking funds as a cash envelope or cash envelopes, and I would actually prefer to do it that way. But um, the way the divorce and our accounts are set up because of the divorce, this all needs to stay in a family account. So this stays in a family savings account. So $290 was put into that family savings account. And I'm going to break all of this down for you in just a moment to show you exactly where um, how much we put towards each savings category, each sinking fund category. Okay, let's take a look at our budget worksheet. We're going to update this to the best of our ability. There are some things we won't be able to update, but um, starting with our fixed expenses. These are our bills and our debts. Car insurance came out. We had budgeted 132, and it was actually 130. So we are a couple dollars below budget there. That's always nice. These variable expenses will be calculated at the end of the month, but I do have a weekly check-in that we will do um, after we finish the rest of this worksheet. So we're not gonna write anything here for now. Okay, coming over here to sinking funds. So we bit, did put 290 towards sinking funds for this month. 40 of that is for Christmas. 50 is for our car registration. 80 is for vacation. 50 is for car maintenance. 60 is for Amazon, and 10 is for Sam's Club. So all together, that's 290. And then um, savings, again, we will also check in at the end of the month to see how much we've done, saved all together. This week, we're saving 60. I'm just gonna make a note down here so I remember that we did do 60 that first week. Okay, so taking a look at the variable expense check-in. So for groceries, we started the month with $800, and um, this week we spent 300 of that. So we are left with 500, which is not ideal. Ideally, we would have only spent 200 this week 
on groceries. Um, so that's why these weekly check-ins are so important for me personally, um, is I need to see, oh my gosh, I've overspent in this category, so I've gotta be better the rest of the month. Okay, for gas for the car, we started with $80. By the way, I did make that change. When I first set this budget up with you guys last week, I had this set to $40. Because, um, with, the, what it is is $40 for every two weeks. I usually get gas every two weeks and it costs around 40. 40 is like usually the max that it costs, but I need to do that twice, so that's $80. So it is one change I made on the budget since I've seen you guys last. So we started with $80 in that category. This week we spent 29 of that. So that's what, 51? Yeah, <laughs> 51. Okay, so for household, household, let's see. Should we have to start with? We have 200 to start with. And we spent $52 on household expenses. So that's, I'm just gonna do a calculator. <laughs> I could do it in my head, but 200 minus 52, 148. $148 left in that category. For spending, we're starting with 204. And this week, um, we distributed 51 of that to various family members. So 204 minus 51. That's 153 left. So now for next week, we'll have, this will be our starting point. So we're gonna start with 500 next week for groceries. 51 is left for gas for the month and then 148 for household expenses and 153 for spending. So that's how I use this sheet. Okay, let's take a look at the sheets at the beginning of the notebook, the workbook. Okay, so we're gonna look at these yearly, the yearly savings trackers. So here are all of my goals. These are my sinking funds. So here are all the goals that I came up with. And I, I did this in a video where I set up my whole notebook for the year. So hopefully you've had a chance to see that. If not, you should definitely check that video out. But um, so each month, we're going to put $40 towards Christmas, 50 towards car registration, 80 towards vacation, 50 towards, towards car maintenance, 60 towards our Amazon Prime membership, and 10 towards Sam's Club. And then there are certain like due dates. So starting down here in December, we have zero in all of these, um, a, a, for all of these accounts. So like I said, in the past, these all would have been individual envelopes, but I have to keep this money in a savings account. So I'm gonna keep really close track of it here so I can see exactly how much is supposed to be going to each category from the savings account. So we have zero for each category. So for the month of December, for Christmas, we added $40. For car registration, we added 50. For vacation, we added 80. For car maintenance, we added 50. For Amazon Prime, we added 60. And for Sam's Club, we added 10. So at the end, what you would do is you would add or subtract whatever you've done in each category. It's pretty simple this month because we can start with zero for each category. So we currently have $40 for Christmas. That's for Christmas for next year. We have 50 for car registration. We have 80 for vacation, 50, for car maintenance, 60 for Amazon Prime, and 10 for Sam's Club. Okay, and I decided to go ahead and try using this tracker this year just to visually track these since I don't have the cash envelopes. So um, some of these I need to save all 12 months. There are 12 boxes here, and I will use all 12 boxes. Some of them I don't need all 12 boxes, so I already like, um, Blue, used blue to color out the boxes that I don't need to fill. So for example, for car registration, I only need five boxes colored, and then that goal will be met for the year. So today I'm gonna to color in the first row, the first box for each category. I think I'm just gonna do like the classic red, orange, and yellow. And I will fast forward this part for you guys. So we 
are all caught up here and it is now time for our savings challenges. Okay, so we are stuffing $60 today. So we have 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. And um, I did I did make some changes, so we need to update this. So we have, I'm currently doing three savings challenges. And let's see. Yes, <laughs> okay. I'm doing the $5 savings challenge, the $10 savings challenge, and then the 100 envelope savings challenge. I recently took out money from these two envelopes to buy Christmas gifts for my family. Um, one of them was designated for Christmas gifts and the other one was designated for clothes, but I decided to combine them and buy them um, by Christmas gifts for my two boys, uh, Jacob and Logan. So today we're going to set up two new challenges starting with um, two new categories actually. So the first category, what I'm saving for is house repairs. So we recently had some plumbing work done and I realized this is something I need to save up for. We used to, we end up using our emergency fund to cover it, but in addition to our emergency fund, I would like to have a category saved just for house repairs. So house repairs, and you know what? I'm actually going to make this my $10 savings challenge. So each gift is going to be worth $10. So once we fill this whole card, we will have $500 saved. And my plan is to probably do this more than once because even 500 is not very much when it comes to like a possible house repair. Our last one was $600, our last repair that we had to have done, it was a plumbing issue. Okay, so this one, I'm going to save up for car repair. Now in my sinking funds, I have car maintenance. That's for things that like I know are going to occur, like oil changes. This is for anything above and beyond like normal car maintenance. So I'm going to save $5 per icon. So that means when I have this whole card filled up, I will have $250 saved. Again, probably not enough to even do a car repair, but my plan is to do this multiple times and then I'll have more money in my envelope. So this is just the beginning, just the start. Okay, so let's start with the $5 challenge, the car repair. And the way I do that is I roll a dice and whatever number I roll, that's what we're gonna save. That's the number of fives we're going to save. So we're gonna end up saving either one five or all the way up to six fives. So let's see how many fives we're gonna save. Three. So one, two, three, which is $15. I am going to put um, the stickers there. So I am going to put um, three stickers, one for each icon. Okay, so that is 15. Let's move on to the $10 challenge. And this is where you guys come in. I ask my viewers each week to pick a number, either one, two, or three. Down in the comment section, like on your comments, put one, two, or three. And um, whatever you guys pick, that's the number, that's the amount that we're gonna put in here. So we're either gonna put um, $10, $20, or $30. $30, so I have these different things from Amazon. And depending on how, like how good of a week it is and how much I'm saving, sometimes we do save more, but um, lately I've just been doing the 10, 20, 30. So I'm gonna flip these over and mix them up, and then we will see what number you guys picked. Um, don't forget to pick a number for next week and put one, two, or three in the description box. Or no, the comment section down below. Okay, so. Let's see what you guys picked. We had four friends pick number one, three friends picked number two, and seven friends picked number three. So number three is the winner. Today we are going to add, oh, only $10 to the, <laughs> the savings. Let's see what the other numbers were. If you picked number one, that was 30, that's where the big number was, and number two was 20. Okay, so we're going to add $10 to today's envelope, so that will be one sticker. Okay. Now it's time for the 100 envelope challenge. Now this one I fill based with one whatever I have left from my other challenges. So let's see how much we're going to add today. Today we're going to add 10, 20, 25, 30, 35. So 35, and ooh, 35 is actually open and available. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill the 35 envelope today. You get the sticker for that. 
And I don't put the money in here. I actually have a separate box where I keep the envelopes for the 100 envelope challenge. You could just put it in there and then like as your denomination, like you could combine denominations and put like $100 bills and do it like a, a cash exchange. But I like to put them in a sealed envelope. So we're gonna put this in envelope 35. And the reason why I like to seal it shut is because I don't wanna be tempted to use it for things that come up. You know, like when I had that plumbing issue recently, I was not tempted to go through and open up all my envelopes to pay for it because I'm working really hard on saving this. By the way, when I'm done with this savings challenge, I think I'll have, I believe it was 5,500 saved, I think. Um, it's around 5,000 something. And I'm gonna be putting that towards one of my debts. So I'm excited to make that big, huge payment at some point in the future. Okay, so that is it for our savings challenges. It is now time for the Q&A um, portion of the video, but if you guys are logging off here, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Okay, so um, there are several questions and a couple of compliments and I think that the compliments are written in a way that you were comfortable with me reading them out loud to you guys, but I'm gonna choose to skip the compliments reading them out loud in today's video because um, I'm just a little embarrassed <laughs> by like all of the nice things you guys say. I'm like, oh, I don't deserve all that praise, but thank you for the compliments, you guys. So let's just focus on the questions. Okay, so this first question is from Without Limits Budgets. Question. <clears throat> I absolutely love a lot of your recipes that you share and my kids who are very picky love them as well. Can you continue sharing recipes with us and maybe show us the weekly grocery shopping that you do? Thank you so much, Jennifer. You're absolutely amazing. Um, thank you. Her name is Erin Lynn. So thank you, Erin Lynn. Um, so actually, I, in case you don't watch my vlogs, I have more people who watch my budgeting videos versus my vlogs. I do try to share a recipe in every vlog, at least one recipe. Um, I don't always, but I try to do that. And as far as the groceries hauls go, I get requested for that sometimes, but those are my least viewed videos. And I probably because I don't enjoy making them, so they're probably not that I don't do a good job would be my guess. I do a better job with things I enjoy doing. So that's why I don't share my grocery hauls, but I'm happy to continue sharing recipes. I love sharing recipes on my weekly vlogs. Okay, so this next question is from Plan to be Booked by Alicia Allen. And um, she says, she says, this question is specifically for her. Is there a certain book you have been wanting, a certain Christmas elf would like to get it for you? So when I saw your message, I was like, oh, there's so many books. There's so many books I want. But to be honest, uh, I, got, I have a huge TBR, which is to be read, a huge list. But um, like reading actual tech, like books with writing is very difficult me, for me. My eyes are not good. I have bifocals, but I just can't see very well, especially like text. So I prefer to read on my Kindle. So um, oh, I don't even know what to say. Here, let me look up my TBR list really quickly and give you just a few ideas if you want. But like, again, I don't know if you can do this, but I would prefer a digital version, like a Kindle version of the book. But here, let me quickly look up a few books I've been wanting to read. Okay, so I'm almost like nervous to share this list with you guys because what if like two of you decide to get me a book and you get me the same book? Like I would feel really bad if that were to happen. I wonder if you can do like a Kindle gift card. Like that would be nice, but Guys, just so you know, I never, ever, ever expect anything from you guys. She asked, that's only why I'm telling her. Um, because I never expect you guys to buy me stuff. Seriously, I don't expect that at all. So um, a few of the books I've been interested in, Alicia, are The Only One Left by Riley Sager, The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana, The Covenant of Water, by Abram Verghese. Also too, I would really like to read the Hunger Games series. I never read it and we recently, Logan and I recently went and saw 
the, the new, like the prequel to the book series. And I watched all the movies, so I know everything that's gonna happen, but I would love to read that whole series. Like any of those books would be really cool to get, either even the, the prequel or any of the original um, Mockingbird book, uh, Hunger Game books. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on to the next question. Okay, so this next question is from Amanda M6069. Is there a specific reason David doesn't drive? Just curious, love watching your videos. Yes, so I think it was about four years ago now that maybe even five, he was in a horrible car accident. He passed out while he was driving. And um, at first they thought it was his heart and then they ultimately decided it was a like severe anxiety attack. And he's on anxiety meds now but I feel like I'm telling, sharing too much information, but basically that's why he doesn't drive. He was in a horrible accident. He first lost his driver's license for six months, but he's just never felt the desire to get a driver's license after that. It was such a traumatic event for him. So he just, he prefers not to drive. He rides his bike. Sometimes he takes um, the city bus to places, but for the most part, he rides his bike places. Okay, so this next question is from B Moji. I know that you've talked about lawyers before for the divorce, but I've never seen that accounted for in the budget. Do you pay for that with money outside the budget that you can't disclose, or is it something that will be billed at the end of end and taken on as debt? Was curious how you were handling that expenses. I understand you probably can't disclose the amount. That is a sensitive information. Was more curious of how it's being handled since it seems outside the budget. It is outside the budget. I will not be in any kind of divorce debt when the divorce is all said and done, um, but I can't discuss any more details to it than that. So the, the important part is I won't be any debt due to the divorce after this is all done. Okay, the next question comes from Nita Price, 5332. What is the name and model of that cute calculator? Love watching your videos. Thank you. So this calculator, I think this is the one I've been using lately, it is from Erin Condren. I don't know if they still sell it. Erin Condren, I'm an Erin Condren affiliate, and they sent it to me, I think it was just last year, in a box. They sent me a bunch of goodies to review with you guys, and this was in there, and I love it, so I use it all the time. I do have an affiliate link to Erin Condren in the description box of this video. If you wanna use that link to head over there, I would appreciate it. Okay, so this next question comes from House of Adriana underscore AF. Hi Jen, love the videos, thanks for sharing. I'm wondering what you do about haircuts and clothing for the boys or yourself. Sincerely, Adriana. Okay, so um, Jacob takes care of himself. David takes care of himself. Logan does not cut his hair. It's, it's a thing he started during COVID. He stopped cutting his hair and he hasn't wanted to cut it since. And it's like really long and he loves it. And he gets compliments on it all the time. So I don't see him ever, I don't see him cutting his hair for quite a while. So with my hair, I actually, when I start, did the whole budgeting thing, started with that, I completely stopped cutting and coloring my hair, I think for a year and a half. And then I realized I could make it a business expense because I'm on camera. So once I made it a business expense, I started doing it again. If it wasn't a business expense, I probably wouldn't cut my hair and I probably wouldn't color it. But um, I do like to have my hair done so because I am on camera. So it's a business expense. Okay, so this next question is from Sherry J7330. Are you setting up some type of cushion in case you and David end up going your separate ways? Also, I do not find your situation confusing. When my ex and I got divorced, we went out for a drink together and a couple of games of pool. LOL, now that confused people. I didn't keep his last name. When my daughter got divorced, she kept his last name and then changed it when her youngest turned 18 to each their own. Kudos to you and David for doing what is what you think is best for Logan. Thank you so much. So, okay, back to the first question. Are you setting up some type of cushion in case you and David end up going your separate ways? I'm not. I'm just relying on the fact that we're gonna sell this house and have a profit from that. But it would be such a good idea to do that, so let me think about that. I guess I'm still so like focused on, I gotta pay debt, I gotta pay debt. So it's hard for me to think about saving money when I could be putting that money towards debt. I don't know, but it would be very smart if I had like a little nest egg. So when we did go our separate I had some money. That would, you know, in addition to whatever we make for selling this house. 
Okay, so this next question is from Homesteading with a Purpose, 9681. Gas for the car seems low. Didn't you used to do $20 a week? Yes, yeah, so that was low. So I did fix that in the budget. I It's $20 a week or $40 every two weeks or $80 a month. So it should be $80 a month. I had put 40, so I went ahead and fixed it for this week. This is from A Betty 1000 Have you thought of working at an online school so you can work from home and be with your son? Yes, I've actually looked into it. We have one online school here in Iowa. Unfortunately, it's a really weird situation where the teachers are still required to go in to the office, even though all their students are online, and their office is like three hours from where I live. So that particular school wouldn't work for me, but there are like um, online English tutoring jobs that are, are more likely what I would be able to do here from home. But um, c currently, I am so busy with the work that I'm doing between um, YouTube and my Etsy shop that I just don't have time to do anything extra and homeschool. I don't have time to do anything extra, but that is always a possibility. Okay, so that is it for this week's questions. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, will you please give it a thumbs up? And I will see you all again next time. Bye everyone.